uh, yeah. So welcome everyone. This is our fourth, I think, community call on the Munified Discord server. Today we will be joined by Timur Govenkaya, the senior security engineer at Halborn, and we will be talking about auditing, focusing on Rust based chains. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So can you introduce yourself? How and why did you start in in this space? Yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm Timur. I'm currently working as a senior offensive security engineer at Halborn, auditing Rust-related projects. Uh, however, mainly I'm focusing more on substrate and near protocol projects at this stage. Before starting in security, I worked for six, eight months as a Python software engineer. But then after watching like Mr. Robot, I want to see what the cool hacking face is like. So after my first spawn on one of the, I can't remember to be honest, uh, after my first spawn on one of the machines and hack the box, if I remember correctly, I realized that, yeah, it's cool. Uh, <laughs> there is no coming back from it. So. Yeah, that's how I started my journey in security. However, the way I ended up in blockchain security was through me sitting in a meeting in front of the CTO of some company that built a substrate chain, trying to land them. So back in the days, I was in a, I was trying to land clients for some part-time consultancy. And as you might have guessed, uh, that call with CTO didn't go well because I didn't know anything about blockchain security back in the days. And yeah, then I was like, yeah, it sounds cool. And it's cool to be one of the first ones in the industry because blockchain security is not as the regular Web2 security that not many people in there. So yeah, uh, a lot of self-learning. And that's how I ended up here right now. So yeah, that's all. Yeah, so when, when did you start auditing? So... Uh, for Halborn, uh, like, yeah, I don't know, uh, for Halborn, I started recently, but overall, my experience is like five years, roughly. Five years, uh, okay, yeah. yeah, four or five years, yeah. So, in, in our last community call, I was talking with the Ethernaut and we talk about uh, different auditing systems. If I recall, he mentioned that Trail of, Byte, Trail of Bits focused on automatic and complex test and he was more f into fill the code embrace the code until he becomes <laughs> one with the code so what's your way for auditing uh, auditing look uh it would have been cool if we had a lot more automated tools in web3 but unfortunately that's not the case so yeah and also we have limited time as auditors. So I basically split my time into code review and on-chain testing. Basically during code review, I read the code, trying to understand as much as possible about it and try and come up with the some testing scenarios for on-chain testing. For me, it's like 75% code review, 25% on-chain testing. Also, um, I'm reusing a lot of developers tests because uh, usually developers already configured all of the testing environment for you so you can just go and plug and play with it so so yeah i mean mine is uh, more of a understand as much as you can with your limited, limited time build uh, an attack surface build some scenarios and test with them uh, on rust there are some automation uh, there are some automated tools but um, I, I'm not use. I'm not relying on them that much, to be honest. But yeah. And uh, after, uh, before starting to review the code, do you do you read the the documentation or? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, I read the documentation. Sometimes I require uh, developers to send um, like a video of all 
through how they interact with the application, how they launch it, how they do stuff so I can understand it better. And they also explain it. I mean, diagrams, if they send diagrams, that's just amazing. I mean, uh, so yeah, that's how I do it. But usually when you're doing the code review and you're reading through code, you already get an understanding how the code is structured. So, yeah. So uh, I know that you're more familiar with Rust, but did you check the other smart contract languages such as Solidity? Yes, I know Solidity. I audited projects on Solidity also. So yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty familiar with this. Also, I know like uh, not. I actually, and also I saw like there's something called Teal language, but I haven't actually checked it out. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, uh, I mean, is it? He was he was looking like an assembly language, to be honest. Correct. Okay. So what do you find the most different between Rust and Solidity audits? Does it come down to different approaches uh, or only the knowledge of the language and the chain? What are, are the uh, same bugs on Solidity as in Rust or there are different? Look, I mean, I mean, you no, know, I mean, they're, they're totally different because, I mean, the, first of all, they're written in different languages, so the bugs are going to be different just because of this, at least. I mean, logical bugs, obviously, I mean, uh, access control bugs, yeah, I mean, both of those have those. But the cool thing about R R Rust chains, uh, you have two main types of bugs. There are chain agnostic and chain specific types of bugs. That's what I call them. Um, chain agnostic bugs, basically, are the bugs that exist in every single Rust chain. Those are usually because of the Rust language itself. I mean, Rust language has some bugs in them. If you write a chain or write a smart contract in Rust, you'll have some Rust bugs, such as like integer overflows, like stack overflows, I don't know, unsafe Rust. Um, and so on and so forth. So, and chain specific bugs are the bugs that exist only on a specific chain because how it was architectured. So, I mean, uh, let me give you an example. I mean, in Substrate, um, Substrate, Substrate is not, I mean, it's not a chain, it's a framework that you build chains with. But still, uh, upon error, since Substrate is not a smart contract. I mean, you're not building smart contracts, you're building chains like layer ones. Uh, upon error, there is no such thing as reverts. I mean, you can simulate it, but still, I mean, by default, there is no such thing as reverts. So, therefore, if, I don't know, let's say you have um, a registration and you validate whether user is already registered, you're just validating this, uh, whether user already exists. In the, in the storage. If you have a validation after you insert that user into storage, even if you throw an error on validation afterwards, you'll still have invalid data in your storage. So that's, that bug is peculiar bug and it only exists in substrate. So yeah, that's, uh, that's the main difference. I mean, in Solidity, I mean, Obviously, I don't have that amount of experience as I have in Rust, but I saw that usually uh, all EVM chains have um, almost exactly the same bugs. But in Rust chains, we have both chain specific and chain agnostic, which are which are usually just the Rust bugs. So yeah. And for starting to. Um... To learn Rust because it's a language that have been around like 15 years, if I recall, or yeah, I think around 2007. I mean, yeah, I mean, it was it was around for some time, let's say. Yeah, so there are a lot of resources to to learn about about Rust. What what are your favorites? I mean, I mean, it's gonna sound like again, like a super common thing, but yeah, a Rust book is super nice. Uh, also, there is like uh, on the YouTube channel, there is a guy called uh, Let's Get Rusty. He literally just uh, went over the Rust book and just converted everything into videos. So if you like watching videos, I mean, that can be useful for you. 
And if you want to learn like Rust security, if you already know how to find Rust bugs, you already can find them in some applications, in some blockchain applications, because they're written in Rust. The good resource that I found super useful uh, is Fuzzing Labs. Uh, uh, the guy who makes them is super knowledgeable, and he has literally just a, a Rust security course and fuzzing course. So, you, I mean, you you should check that out. But yeah, again, I mean, uh, for auditing, you don't have to know how to code on a developer level. But still, if you try to build some mini projects for you for yourself, uh, you'll understand quicker. And you'll understand how real applications are built, and you will understand a majority of the functionality a lot easier. So yeah, that's all on that side. And uh, we have mostly our, our projects are mostly written on Solidity, but now a lot of Rust uh, projects are joining. Do you spend time hunting bugs on Immunify? Uh, no, unfortunately, no. Uh, I mean, each person has different aspirations, let's say. I mean, for instance, in my free time, I would like to produce content and teach others, like doing internal trainings rather than going and hunt for bugs. I mean, it makes me more fulfilled, let's say. Um, so, yeah, um, no, I, I'm not hunting bugs, but if I find super interesting, let's say, Rust uh, project on Immunify, I'll definitely take a look. Yeah, you, you should check our, our article, Why Auditors Soul Hunt Bugs on Immunify? Because it's a great piece. Uh, <laughs> sorry, uh, can you repeat the last part? My audio just ran off. Yeah, yeah, that you need to check Why Auditors Soul Hunt Bugs on Immunify? I'm not. They. <laughs> I'm not promoting, but a little bit. So yeah, it's a really <laughs> good piece. <laughs> okay, sure. I I will. I will. I will definitely will. <laughs> and how, do you think Rust? How do you think Rust-based networks are will be in the future? Can the Ethereum virtual machine and Rust-based uh, networks coexist? Or do you think that will be only a winner? I mean, there definitely won't be a single winner. Like, I believe like giving ability for developers and users to choose from is the future. I mean, doesn't matter whether it's a Rust chain, a VM chain, or, I mean, Teal chain, doesn't matter. Uh, if a Rust chain supports a VM, that's amazing. Now developers can build projects on top. And, yeah, I believe they'll coexist. There will be bridges between them, letting developers build cross-chain applications. So yeah, that's what I think. I, I uh, yeah. So that was all the questions I have ready. I will read a little bit on the chat. Yeah, let me just go to the chat. Is there yeah. are there? I will ping you in some of them. Okay, let me just go. I don't know how to use this exactly. Can you please comment or give some ad The link is not opening for me. Um, Look, anyways, I mean, like, let me just say it again. For some reason, maybe it's not opening for me. Sorry, your mic just, uh, I didn't get what you said. Yeah, I'm trying to open the link. Uh, it's not opening for me. That's wrong. Let me move for the second question. <laughs> Uh, then if I just open that one, I'll just uh, answer it also. A uh, Neldang workshop. Uh, Neldang workshop is good. Uh, I wish, I mean, did they, I, I didn't go through it, uh, but 
have some guys who actually went over it and he, it is good even if as you said Solana keeps updating their version still the techniques are gonna probably uh, remain the same to some extent so i would still advise you to complete it i mean if there was uh we actually have a guy uh in our team uh his name is Piotr. if you decide to do another community call you might ask him to come he is he's the beast in solana so i mean he would help you a lot more i guess than me on that front but uh workshop now then is a good thing i'll strongly advise you okay uh next question hello yeah here as an auditor who knows solidity what other programming languages do you recommend to learn for auditor auditing uh, Viper, the, Rust. Yeah. Yeah, definitely Rust. I mean, um, Haskell. I, I I only know. I mean, you, you might you might say that I'm biased, but I mean, you can see from the industry. I mean, uh, have you seen a lot of Haskell chains? You you only saw Cardano maybe who uses um, Haskell as a programming language, but haven't seen a lot of projects from those guys, and haven't seen uh, any like uh, I mean, at least coming to uh, to my side, so I'm not sure about Haskell, but Rust. If you learn Rust, uh, if you if you know Rust and you know Solidity and you know Rust security, you're gonna be like a unicorn. So uh, I'm pretty sure you'll be able to even get a job a lot easier if you're planning. So. Any other source to learn Rust? Uh, security because flushing labs course it's too expensive uh, what uh, uh, which one can you repeat yeah a uh, flushing labs course it's too expensive that if you know any other source to learn rust security uh, rust security rust security um I cannot think of any, but uh, I can give you a hint. Uh, soon, um, uh, there might be a, a free course of at least the uh, last security part coming. So, so I mean, but not not right now that I can think of because I was kind of uh, when I first uh, started, uh, I actually went over the. I mean, I went over the fuzzing labs and labs. I mean, I was just Googling around. But if I find any resources, I'll just post them in here or yeah. anywhere. So yeah, you can post that. any any resources you want on the on the Learn Blockchain channel, and will be very yeah, welcome. definitely, <laughs> definitely, definitely, definitely. definitely. Okay, so, uh, CKK asked, uh, can you read it? Because I'm not sure. Uh, uh, who, CK? Uh, CK? Yeah. Okay, CK. Uh, not a Rust language specific question, but hope it's still okay. I mostly ask this to others too. How do you keep track of a new project called Base Audio Learners? Do you go from line by line and write your own sort of documentation, or do you keep variables? Which are mostly in your head and work that way. Uh, the thing I do, um, I first have a map of protected functions and not protected functions. I build the attack surface through first from not protected ones, uh, just listing all the input so I can see from where actually the attack might come from. And also about the reading and understanding, uh, what I do is I first skim through the code i just try to read it i mean as uh, as fast as possible even just to get like overview of all the functions overview of the uh, uh how everything is structured from the high level 
if you if you have diagrams, if you have diagrams, I mean that will be like even easier. But uh, usually, I mean after 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 doing this, I also think about the how uh, what's the intended functionality first before actually trying to break it. I will try to. Uh, just go over, and if I can, I have like I don't know, uh, I can do uh, some manipulations with functions, like in a regular way. I'll try to do intended intended ways first. You'll be surprised that sometimes intended way is not working, and you if you cannot do execute the function in intended way, how are you supposed to break it? So first, try to do intended way thing, and yeah, that's what I do. Uh, first, go over the Code, just skim through it. Uh, also, make a map like a attack surface. Then you can just go uh, try all of the functions in the intended way, and then you can go at the last stage. You already have a already have an understanding how everything works, and afterwards you can go again line by line and just uh, bookmarking all the parts that you find interesting to come to to come back to them later. So yeah, I mean, it was kind of like a, um, might sound a bit like too much confusing, uh, but I'm, I'll try to add like a step-by-step -step thing what I do in the, any of the channels. So it's going to be a lot more clear. Okay. I think so, there are no more questions. I mean, I don't know. Um, yeah, seems like everything is cool. Yeah. Are you good in maths? Um, a bit, <laughs> uh, if you are asking me. So, uh, what? Uh, what are some good resources for getting? into auditing um getting into auditing like in general solidity if you're into solidity you can uh i mean even if i had a lot of resources to be honest uh even even at adrian uh if you know adrian he posted amazing uh, thread about solidity auditing and on my side you can check go to my twitter uh like not a promotion just uh i listed this the Rust security thread there with some resources that you can check out. Obviously, if any of you have any questions, you can DM me anytime. I'll try to help. Uh, oh, you some really complicated math. Do you understand such a function? Uh, okay. Uh, Maths, do you understand such functions right away, or do you also need to revisit math libraries in order to understand the maths used in functions? Um, look, if they're located maths, you won't understand it right away. Usually, you should ask. I mean, look, if you're doing bug bounty, usually those guys should list all of the all of the functions they use. Uh, they they're using for calculations. By functions, I mean not the function program, program, programmatic functions, but the mathematical functions. So you have to read those. I mean, I don't know um, how to calculate a collateral in in a loan or something like this. Uh, otherwise, you'll see just uh, some numbers uh, combining together, dividing onto each other without understanding what's happening in there. So yeah, I mean, definitely yeah, the documentation is your friend on that side um i mean yeah i mean that's 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 all i mean uh it's possible someone to get into rust without any pro previous programming language um i mean yes i mean why why not i mean to be honest it's easier than c plus plus um to my experience and it's more high level. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's not as high level as Python, but still, 
you'll be able to pick it up, I believe. So you might try it out. I mean, Rust was the most loved programming language for some reason. So, uh, what's your favorite language to audit? Uh, yeah, Rust, I guess. <laughs> and my favorite change to audit is near if you because those guys have a super nice abstracted Rust because of this near smart contract. Rust near smart contracts read as solidity ones for some reason because I mean they abstracted a lot of complication, complicated functionality, so it's easy to read there. So that's why uh, I really like auditing uh, near smart contracts. I have another question. Do you make more memes with a rusty word or with crustaceans in in, in the rust space? Uh, a lot, a lot. Do, do we make a lot of memes with Rustations? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What What do you prefer, a rusty memes or <laughs> crustacean memes? Uh, rusty, I guess. Rusty. Okay. <laughs> you know, I'm not into. I'm, I, like I got used to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, 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 see. Uh, really. Someone else is writing. Yeah. The recording of reliability for also and the reoccurring. Uh, the one actually I mentioned right now is uh, that's the first thing you should be checking, uh, which is whether the storage manipulations such as insertions, deletions, or like mutations are happening after all of the validation of the input that are coming to the coming to into your storage because there, there are no reverse. So if you uh, if input is basically validated after the storage write you'll have invalid data even if the even if the call fails so that's the most common i saw plus the most common one again the rust packs are everywhere integer all flows i've seen like a lot uh, but people uh, already starting to notice you know, it's common pattern so they have measures they're using um checked math basically um similar concept as safe math in solidity so um yeah that's 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 the one i would suggest you to uh, to take to keep an eye on but still substrate chains are kind of um uh there are not many of them and you saw like polkadot just and some recently got para chains so we i still need to build kind of a database of common vulnerabilities around because so far it's more of a that bug that I explained, and plus some Rust bugs, and plus some logical bugs. So yeah. Yeah, I think someone is writing another question. Yes, sir.
Timor, are you are you muted? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> did you did you read this this latest one about the ther the zero address? Uh, the one bug I read. Can you pass me the link uh, so I can read about this one because I haven't catch it. So that would be interesting for me also because I haven't seen it in a while. Okay, uh, I will read about that and tell you my thoughts. Maybe I don't know which channel, but <laughs> maybe I think can help me. Uh, about the question, have you had any experience while auditing where you'd say that still save my a lot of time? That technique helped me a lot. Something that seems small but had a big impact in being more productive. For weekend. Um, for this, I would say reusing developers tests. That was super productive for me, especially for Rust. The guy just made the whole mock of the of the chain and set up all the test configurations. And the only thing I need to do is just copy his, some of pieces of his code and build some scenarios inside and just run in cargo tests. I mean, it was super productive, even maybe uh, if I encounter such tests, maybe uh, sometimes I'm even spending more time uh, trying to execute those scenarios inside of the test instead of just going into on-chain testing and spending more time there. So yeah, that one, I would say. And also there is one uh, substrate tool that I like. Uh, let me just get Thank Yeah, so if there is no more questions, we can wrap it up here. Thank you so much yeah. for, for your time and helping us to understand a little bit more about Rust chains. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, happy to help. Um, 
I will just, if you have any more questions or anything, just you can DM me and I'll try to respond to all of them. Thank you. See you again.